is holy. The yes. Lord is worthy. The oh, Lord is mighty. Lord. The Lord is powerful. The Lord is magnificent. Thank you, Jesus. God is a moving God. Yes, he is. If your soul, which is currently housed inside of your blood, ever stops moving, if the activity in your brain ceases, they will pronounce you dead. We serve a living, moving God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's strange to see God constantly dealing with his people and requiring them to move. No, it's not. It's not. Because this is how God operates. He's a moving God. He's a living God. And anything not moving is dead. So it's not strange to see God requiring his people to move. Hey, Isaac. You about to be murdered. Abraham, go kill your only son, Isaac. Hey, Lot, go to the mountain. Escape what I'm about to do here. Hey, Moses, go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my son go. Let him go. God today is telling me to tell you and to tell you he wants you to go, to move. God got something else. I don't want to ask you next year, why are you here? What are you doing here? Or why aren't you on the pathway to your destiny? I'm talking to you all today. Listen to me good. The pathway to your destiny must include directions from God. And God never gives you full direction. He wants you to keep coming back. He don't want you to run off and leave him. That's what we will do. If God gave us all of the directions for our life, if he told us everything we needed to know, we'd just start running and we'll forget about it. But if he give it to you piece by piece, if you keep coming back here every Sabbath, you'll get to rely on him. That's what he wants. You're supposed to be moving and operating in the will of God. You're supposed to be prophesying and working in the kingdom and in, the, in your destiny. You're not supposed to be hiding in a cave. But God, you, you know about this. You know what I went through. Why did you allow it to happen? Proverbs 4.26 says, Ponder the path of your feet and let all thy ways be established. That means let all the steps you take be ordered by the Lord. You're sick, but God is a healer. You have to take medication. What if a miracle from God required you to make some uncomfortable changes? What if a miracle from God required you to leave some familiar things? What if knowing your destiny, your, your destiny that God has set up for you is the solution to anxiety? Would it be worth spending time with God? How do you get the solutions to life doing the same exact thing? If your salary ain't enough, is going to school worth it? How long does it take to get an associate's degree? Two years. Why don't we like change? Some of them says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he, who's the he? The good man. He likes it. I like when God chooses my wife. I like when God chooses my house. I like when God tells me which house to buy and not to buy. I don't have to worry about credit when I have favor because I have my order, my steps have been ordered by the Lord. And I want y'all to be just as blessed. I want y'all to be blessed beyond measure. I want y'all to be so blessed you can't stand it. And God desperately wants to bless you, but the Bible says your iniquities have turned these things away from you. Your iniquities have turned away these things. God has a blessing that's already set up before the foundation of the world, and he has it set up in your life and in your pathway, but your iniquities, your sins, have turned those things away from you. And your sins, the Bible says, have withholding good things from you. Sin keeps good things from you? It's time to turn this around. Amen. Why are you sick when others are being healed? Why are you struggling when God is blessing? Why are you sad when God is offering joy? Why are you anxious when God can order your steps and direct your path and give you instructions? All you got to do is get away from your iniquity. God commanded the ravens. Long before Elijah was born, he commanded him on this day at this time, in this place, I want you in position to feed the prophet Elijah. That's how God operates. He's in full control at all times. And the ravens did exactly what God told him to do.
These birds brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he was able to sit there and just allow the blessings of the Lord to come to him. And he stood there by the brook and he drank water from the brook that God provided. It's amazing how awesome God is when you live for him. The Bible says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Do you think God had something to do with the rain stopping? Do you think God had something to do with the drought? Elijah, if the brook dried up, what are you doing here? If the raven isn't coming, what are you doing here? If the situation you're in isn't pleasing God, or if the situation you're in isn't pleasing to God, what are you doing here? You got to move. I'm talking to you all today. You got to move. If you just sit there and complain, if you reject the logical decision to do something else and focus on the dry river, if you stay here and complain about being hungry or thirsty, go ahead, make a post about it. Whatever you're going through, go ahead, text your friends about your problem. Then what? How much abuse are you willing to take? It's time to do something different. God gave Elijah instructions. He told him where to go and he told him what to do. He didn't tell him everything because God never tells us everything. God is never going to tell you your entire life. He'll give you a step. Join this ministry. Follow this leader. Read this scripture. Don't go here. Don't work here. Do this. Do that. That's how God told Elijah. Just go here. Even though Jezebel is there killing prophets, that's what she's doing at the time God told him to go there. She's killing the prophets of the Lord and she sent them on a run. They went running. And Elijah's coming to show up. So Elijah's going to confront the false prophets of Jezebel and her husband, her husband, King Ahab. Thank you, Sister Nikki. So as Elijah's going to confront her, and he's going to conf confront the prophets of this false god, he puts a challenge to the false prophets to prove that our God, the God that we serve, the God of the covenant servants, whose name is Jesus, he is telling these people, I'm going to challenge you. You believe your God is real? When you really believe your God is real, you can do this. You can put him to the test and God will be glad to show up and show out. Our God is the true and living God. He said, hey, go ahead, call on the name of your gods. And I'm going to call on Jesus. And the God that answers, I'm going to make y'all a deal. The God that answers by fire. Tell you what, here's an altar right here. We're going to call, you're going to call your God and tell him to burn this altar up. And I'm going to call on Jesus. And whoever God answered by fire, we're going to make it established that that's the God of the universe. Deal? And all the Bible says that all the people answered and said, eh, it's a good idea. Let's do it. Elijah, he's sitting on the side and he's waiting. Go ahead, do y'all thing. And he's watching them call on their God. And it's 12 o'clock. Elijah, he's chilling. But he's tired of waiting on their false God to answer. He's tired of them not being able to admit that their God ain't real. That's hard for them to do that because change is hard and it's difficult to change something you've been doing for years. It's difficult to change something that you've been doing all of your life. So Elijah goes out there to mock them. He's going to mock them and their God. And he says, hey, y'all, scream louder. For he's a, he's a God, right? That means he's way up there. Maybe, maybe y'all ain't loud enough. Maybe that's the problem. So Elijah said, maybe or maybe he's having a conversation with somebody. Or maybe he's out on his morning jog. Or maybe that joker on vacation. Or he's asleep. So go ahead. Y'all got to scream louder so since he's asleep, maybe you got to wake him up. The Bible says these prophets of this false God begin to get so frustrated all day long. Their God couldn't answer. And they can't figure it out. And they can't understand it. When you put what you truly believe to a real test, what do you do when it doesn't show up with the results you've always expected? What they so desperately believed in was being put to a test and Elijah is over there mocking them. They began to cry out and cut themselves with knives and with lances till the blood gushed out all over them. Elijah knows his God and he knows his God is with him. Do you know if your God is with you? Do you want him to be with you? It's easy. You can make that decision in 10 seconds. Yep. He tells him, all right, y'all, my turn now. This is what we're going to do. Get four barrels of water. Wet up the altar. Do it again. 
and again. Do it four times for 16 barrels of water. Now, fill the trench around it. Fill that up with water. The Bible says the fire of the Lord fell immediately and consumed the burnt sacrifice. It burned up the wood. It burned up the rocks. The fire of the Lord burned up the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. This is a consuming God. This is the almighty God. That's because the God we serve is the only true and living God. And Elijah said to them, take these prophets of Baal, every last one of them. Don't let none of them escape. And they took him. And Elijah said, bring him down to the brook of Kishon and kill them jokers. Let's see your God come and get you. Let's see your God deliver you. So King Ahab, he a snitch. Little punk went and told his wife, Jezebel. Look, this is all. let me tell you what Elijah did. He called him by, uh, Jezebel on the phone and said, look, Elijah just killed all your prophets. He made your God look stupid. Your God didn't show up. His God showed up. He did some type of trickery and made fire fall from heaven, burn up everything, burn up all your stuff. And now he killed all your prophets with a sword. And what are you going to do? So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah. So really, that's what happened? Okay. Go tell Elijah, let the gods do to me and even more. If I don't make your life as one of them, the ones that you kill, let God do it to me. If I don't make your life just like them by this time tomorrow. You got 24 hours. I promise you I'm going to kill you. She's swearing that by this time tomorrow, you're going to be unalive. When Elijah heard that, he said, oh, shoot. He got up and he ran for his life. And he came to Beersheba, a town owned by the tribe of Judah. And he left his servant there. He said, look, just stay here. No reason for you to die. This woman is coming. Just stay here. I want you to be safe. And the Bible says Elijah kept on running. He ran all by himself for a full day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and he sat down under a juniper tree and he became suicidal. The man of God who just saw the power of God, he called that fire down. He did that. God responded. God could have showed, sent the fire at any moment. He waited till Elijah beckoned for that. And he sent the fire down and Elijah saw that. And now he's suicidal. Now things not going the way you wanted. You're ready to give up on life. He told God to kill him. And he said, it's enough now, God, I'm tired. I had enough of this life. This woman, Jezebel, she killed all your prophets and I'm the only one left. Just like God came and got you out of, out of all of your family members, came and got you out of all of your family members and you're the only one that he showed the truth. Think about that. Elijah is the last one. So he says, oh Lord, take my life. For I am not better than my father's. I don't deserve to be alive. He's the last one. The only one left. God chose him just like he chose you out of all your family. Isn't that amazing? And he showed you the truth. Remember I told you this morning why I needed that cave picture? Thank you, Jesus. And he came over. Elijah came over into a cave. And Elijah said, you know, I'm just going to live here. Can't go back out there. She's going to find me somewhere. I'm staying up in this cave. It was then that the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here? Elijah, what are you doing here? You're in a cave? What are you doing here? And he came up with a valid excuse. I want you to pay attention. This, I want you to do this for me. I want you to watch verse 10. This is verse 10, right? Okay. He said, this is what Elijah responded to the Lord. I have been very jealous for you, God. I mean, I did all of this for you because the children of Israel they forsook your covenant and they threw down your altars and the Israelites, it was the Israelites that killed your prophets with the sword. And I, me, by myself, I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to come and kill me as if God don't know what's going on, as if God didn't plan your life, as if God just said, oh, shoot, what's going on in your life? God created every decision that you're going to make. He ordered all of your steps. God is in full control at all times. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you've been through and he knows what you're going to go through. It, it makes no sense for you to sit here complaining and wondering about your life when you have the God of the universe on your side. He said, they're seeking to kill me and take my life. So that, that's why I'm here. Good excuse, right? God told Elijah, he said, oh my gosh, go stand on the mountain before the Lord and I want you to watch me pass by. See that? It's not the place 
that I want to be. If your destiny is over there, why are you over here? That's my personal concern. I don't want the Lord to pass by. That's what he told Elijah. I'm going to pass by. I want you to come here, God. But when you're not in the right place, when you're not in your right destiny, when you haven't figured out your destiny, when you haven't spent enough time with God to find out your destiny, God will pass by. I don't want to miss it. That's why I got I to gotta listen to the right stuff. And I got to listen to the right people. I don't want to cloud my judgment. I can't watch everything. I'm not getting any younger. So I cannot afford God to pass me by. I don't have time for that. This is verse 11. The Bible says, as God Almighty walked by, a great and strong wind tore the mountains. The wind broke to pieces, the rocks right before the Lord. God is walking and the mountain is busting up and moving out of his way just by the wind. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. Thank you, Jesus. And after the earthquake, the Bible says there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Help me, Jesus. The revelation is coming. You get it. And after all this destruction and calamity of wind and fire and rocks are falling and, and, and all of this horrible stuff going on, there God stood and spoke in a still, calm, Soft voice. Elijah wrapped his face in the scarf because he's scared. He's still scared that if I go out there, Jezebel is going to see me. And he went out and he stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, that soft voice from the Lord came to Elijah after all of that. In verse 13, and God said to Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Elijah? Why do we clutch comfort? I come to tell you tonight, God is going to remove your comfort zone. That's what's going to happen. God is going to dry up your brook and he's not doing it to hurt you. God doesn't have an interest in hurting you. Elijah says, this is verse 14. Do you remember what he said in verse 10? Elijah says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken the covenant, thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, am the only one that's left and they seek my life. To take it away. Did you catch that? Elijah said the same thing he said in verse 10. He said the same thing that he said before God just showed him his power. How could you? I want to know, are you, those of you listening to me all over the world, are you doing the same thing? Are you dating the same tired, good for nothing guy? How many times does your heart have to be broken? How long do you plan to be out of God's will? Just another girl. The problem was the last girl, right? I'll just pick another girl, right? How long, how much time would it be before you get help dealing with your childhood trauma? We keep carrying pain from, from one school to another relationship to the next job. And, and how long are you going to keep complaining about the same? You have to get to your destiny. You must get to your destiny. That's the place God ordained before you got here. He has a place for you to be and he ordained for you to get there. And the pain that you have and the things that you go through has a purpose and that purpose is to get you to move. But we sit around and we complain about it and we do the same thing over and over. And that pain is supposed to say, no, it's over. No, I'm moving. Your destiny, that's the place nobody can stop you once you start moving. Your destiny, that's the place where you begin to please God. Your blessings are there. Your peace, that's where it's at. There you'll find your rest. Your real friends, your real friends, they're in your destiny. When you're walking in your destiny, that's where you'll find your real friends and your real family. That's it. I want you that's watching and listening to me. I want you to find your purpose. I want you to find your purpose. I want you and you, 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 and you to find your purpose. Because if you find your purpose, but if your purpose doesn't include God, if your purpose doesn't include God, that ain't your purpose. No excuses, no complaining. Just move. It's time to move. Say it to yourself. Say it within yourself. 
It's time to move. I got to move. I got to do something else. Cl close your eyes and command your spirit to move. I'm going to something else. This message is for you. God sent me here today. I struggled with this for a long time. And I saw your faces as I began to write this message. And God said, tell them it's time to move. I'm going to shake up the comfort zone. I'm going to cause some things to happen. And you'll see then that I told you to move. The Bible says, God said to you, this is a prophecy to you. I'm prophesying all week. This is a message to you. God says, I know the thoughts. Read this with me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know what I'm thinking about you. God said, the thoughts that I think about you, Sister Nikki, are thoughts of peace. When I think about you, I think about peace. When I think about you, God says, sweet pea, the thoughts that I have for you are not evil. I'm going to give you an expected end. I'm going to make sure you get to your destiny, even if it hurts you. It just depends on how much pain you want to go through. It just depends on how much heartache you want to go through. If you want to get there now, that's great. If you want to get there with an open wound and more pain and more trauma, that's fine. But I got an expected end for you. I already planned it out. There are people on this earth today that has never seen God work a miracle. That's the world we live in now. That's just the way things are. What if bad things that happened in your life weren't really bad things? What if they all served a purpose? What if God really did plan your life? What if God really is in control? What if God created this earth and put people here and he really is in control of every people that's here? What if you were supposed to lose that friend? What if you got fired because God was protecting you from something worse? What if? What if what God wants is a painful process that requires you to move to the unknown? You sang about it. You heard me before I even said it. God wants you to move. He wants you to move. If you believe that, what are you doing here? The Lord told Elijah after he ignored him, he ignored him, his suicidal request. After God ignored him, complaining about his life. After he listened to him say the same thing twice, God said, go. You done? But nothing changed. I still have a destiny for you. You still got to get there. So when you're done complaining, go. Get back on the pathway to your destiny. God already passed by. This is the residue. This is the tremors. You in the wind, but you're not in the mountain. The God we serve is always moving. We got to be flexible. We got to learn his voice. We got to constantly hear his word. We got to learn to bask in his presence. Look what God can do just by walking. This is recorded. This happened. God can tear up stuff and bring fire by walking. You have nothing to fear but him. The Lord left behind a nice fire. Praise the Lord. We need it. But how valuable is that fire if God ain't in it? Remember, it said God wasn't in the fire. You want to be where God is. Whatever you need, if God ain't in it, but he's paying my car notes. But God is over there. Oh, but this makes me feel so good. But God's not in it. But she's been my friend for years. She's not part of your destiny. You're giving me the symptoms of you being in the wrong place. Of course there's consequences because you're not supposed to be here. The brook is dried up. It's not going to get better. This is God's doing. And when you discover your purpose in life, when you figure out God loves you and he has a plan for you, when you truly believe God isn't trying to destroy you, when you accept that you are valuable and you're perfectly fashioned the way God wants you. When you get in the place where your heart's desire is to please God, can anybody ever just think about the one thing that you were actually created to do and that's to make God happy? What if you spent one day pleasing God, doing the things that makes God happy? Trust me when I tell you he'll shower you with his blessings that you don't have room to receive. I wish somebody could get in their spirit, tuck the person next to you. I don't do this often, but tell him he'll give you what you don't deserve. This is the God I serve. He'll give you what you don't even deserve. What kind, who wouldn't serve a God like that? That's called grace. That's called mercy. 
That's called love. Thank you all. Thank you, Jesus. That's an inspiring message. That's motivational because God is awesome. I'm going to tell you how awesome God is. God has saved your family and your friends. That's awesome. God is awesome. He'll heal your body and your mind. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? God is awesome. He'll take away the pain of your past and the memory. God is awesome. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who doesn't want God-level blessings? God is awesome. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost and give you power. This God that we serve is powerful and mighty. He'll give you direction. He'll order your steps. This is a word from God for you. He'll give you spiritual gifts so you don't have to, you can see stuff before it happens. No, don't go down that street. Danger. Don't buy that car, it's gonna break down. Don't take that job, God got a better one. God, in heaven, please God, allow me to hear your voice and know my path. I need somebody to do something for me. Promise yourself you won't be here this time next year. Promise yourself that. Promise yourself that. I'm not gonna be in this position this time next year. Whatever you started, finish it. Whatever you, you, you're doing, stop it. Get on the pathway for your destiny so this time next year, You'll be somewhere else. You've been saying you're going to change your diet for years. When are you going to start? You've been talking about going to school since ever. You mean to tell me you got another DUI? You still getting into fights at the club? Start the process today. Move from here to there. God already ordained your life. Just like he ordained the death of Jezebel. Think about this. He's worried about Jezebel coming to kill him. But God already ordained Jezebel's death the day that she's going to die. Why are you worried about stuff in your life and pain? Why aren't you just on the pathway? Why are you worried? Did you see God just walked by? He caused the wind to cause an earthquake that caused a fire and you weren't harmed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You went through things in your life that would have killed anybody else. Somebody else with your life would have checked out long time ago. The doctors didn't even tell you, but they still can't figure out how you survive. God is awesome. The stuff that you've gone through in this lifetime already, if somebody else was in your body, they would have killed themselves a long time ago. Did you know God can walk by? Did you know that? Have you read this before? He can walk by and destroy stuff and cause havoc and protect you at the same time. Think about this. The first thing he told me, he told him where to stand. The first thing he did in life said, stand over here. His protection was already there. I'm about to tear all this up, but I got you. Protect me. And when I tear everything up, I'm not even going to say nothing about it. I'm just going to ask you the same question. Why are you here? Why are you still doing it? But what are you doing? I asked you the same thing before. I blew up everything. I'm going to ask you the same thing. I don't want you here this time next year. Do something else. None of us deserve this God. You nor I deserve not this God. We don't deserve this God. Not the almighty God. So what am I supposed to do? What does God want me to do? How do I get to my destiny? Well, we just go to the scriptures. The Bible says, and now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Except, this is all he requires, to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. That's all we got to do. That's it. We ain't got to do nothing else. We just got to serve God. We just got to fear God. We just got to appreciate God. Do y'all know what happened to Jezebel? They pushed off a balcony. <laughs> and a horse trampled over her. Mm. And then dogs ate her. Mm. That's God level stuff. Yes. <laughs> you worried about what's going to happen to you worried about Jezebel and God has a plan already set up. He's already given instructions that I want this woman dead. She got to go. It's in the plan. Just keep moving. What are you going to do when you find out Jezebel's dead? Then you're going to feel like, I just ran for a whole day. I left my servant in a whole nother city. I got to walk all the way back to, you just, you got to walk all the way back a whole day. Now it's going to take you two days because you're not running with the same fear you had. <laughs> and you got to go all the way back to go get that joke. Hopefully he's there. And then you got to go back again to get where you're supposed to be. And that's what some of us are right now. We just, go, we, we're in a hamster's wheel, just doing the same foolishness over and over. And we're looking for ways to comfort our life. 
We, we turn to substance and we turn to other things, trying to make the symptoms and the consequences of our, us not being in our destiny. We're trying to make this life work when God's like, here, I have a better life for you. But God, what about this? What about that? I already ordained for a horse to trample her. <laughs> Did you know that I have a dog that was created and I have this dog on the journey? He's on his way right now to eat her body and you worried about.